In today's Gospel, St. Peter is asking Jesus Christ, thinking that he was very generous, do, do we have to forgive our sins, uh, our brothers and sisters, I'm sorry, uh, seven times, as seven times? Seven is a very, uh, perf like a perfect number in the Bible. And Jesus Christ goes further and say, he said, no, not seven times, but seven times, 77 times. So always. And he tells a parable that uh, teaches us something about forgiveness and mercy. So let us see the parable and what is some elements of the parable that in my opinion are very uh, meaningful and can teach us uh, about forgiveness and about mercy. The first thing, uh, the parable is saying that a Lord, a master, was, wants to settle accounts with his servants and he finds out that some of them owed him a huge amount according to our translation. But let me tell you, the better translation, a better translation actually is 10,000 talents. So the debt of that servant is 10,000 talents. Now you are going to say, what is that? What amount is that? Let me give you some uh, perspective of that. Josephus, who was a Jewish historian, in his book, he said the following, that in the in fourth century BC, um, the taxes of Palestine, we like taxes, huh? so let us talk about taxes. They collected the amount of 8,000 talents, the entire Palestine. Antipas received 200 talents, talents in taxes from Perea and Galilee. And 600 talents were collected from all Judea, Idumea, and Samaria. Remember, this servant owes the master 10,000. So let us say that the debt, I have no idea, maybe you know how much money the government collects annually from taxes in the United States. So you want to put that in our context, the debt is higher than whatever the government collects in a year, which means it's something that very few people, I guess, I don't know if somebody can pay that, but very few people can pay it. I guess we all cannot pay that, we all who are, who are here. So when the servant says, I'm going to read the sentence, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full, he's lying. He will need many lives to be able to pay that debt. He need to be immortal to be able to pay the debt. So it's not about patience, it's that he cannot really pay the debt. That's the first element. So now let us compare that with the other servant, or with the debt that a brother, a companion, a fellow servant has owes this servant. The, our translation says, if I can find, ah, it's here who owed him a much smaller amount. The translation, the better translation is 100 denarii. What is, the con what is the meaning of that? A denarii was the average daily wage for a workman. So his fellow servant owes him, him 100 denarii, which means 100 days of wage, which means it was something more possible, I would say, to pay. And <coughs> this fellow servant says to him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. He didn't say, he doesn't say everything. I, w I, w I will not going to pay you back full, full, in full. What is the translation? In full. Yeah, uh, uh, not everything. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say everything. I'm going to pay you back. So, and you can see the difference is huge. Somebody did the math and he came with a number. 
the difference between the two deaths is 600,000 times greater. The first one is 600,000 times greater. So it's huge, huge. Now I think we have the perspective. So what happened when the servant is telling his master, I'm going to pay you everything, what he receives, the master knew that he would not be able to pay everything. And what he receives after he says that? Moved with compassion. He receives compassion and he receives the cancellation of the entire debt. That's Jesus Christ, that's God. That's God who pays, excuse me, who forgives and who is a compassionate God. And what his fellow servant received from him, I'm going to read the, the gospel. But he refused. The Greek verb is linked with willing. So he was not willing to do anything, to be a compassionate servant. So we can see how here uh, is a beautiful, beautiful teaching for each one of us. At the end of the gospel, it is said, there is a question. Here is the master asking a question, to, the, the question for each one of us. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? The answer is yes. But he didn't have it. He didn't have that pity. He didn't have mercy. He was not uh, forgiving. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Now, let me go to, and I want to invite you to read that document, The Face of Mercy, wrote by Paul Francis. Uh, you can read the entire document, it's not too long. It's about mercy. I'm going to read only a part of number nine, and I will be done, okay? Don't worry. It's not raining, so maybe. Okay, and he's talking about this parable in number nine. And here is what Pope Francis says. This parable contains a profound teaching for all of us. And this is why I want to invite you to meditate during this week. First teaching. We are called to show mercy because mercy has first been shown to us. This is the first teaching of that parable. Let me say that in another word, in another way. We have been the object of mercy first. So now we are invited to be the subjects of that mercy. God has forgiven us. This is the sign of that forgiveness, that mercy first. So we have, we have experienced, we should experience that mercy. So we now have to go out and be the subject of that mercy. I think it's beautiful, and how important is that for a Christian to understand that. When I show mercy to a brother, to a sister who has committed a sin against me, which is very common, I'm just doing what God did first in my life. He showed me mercy and forgiveness. Now I am invited to show that to others, to somebody else. And the Pope continues, for us Christians, it is an imperative from which we cannot excuse ourselves. That's very important too. It is not, not because I cannot, uh, no. It is an imperative, it is an obligation. You know that is a, what it means, an imperative. It's an obligation. We are obliged to forgive if we want to be called Christians. It's not if we want. It's that we have. This is what Pope says. Second invitation. At times, how hard it seems to forgive. Pope knows that it is difficult. It's not easy. 
to forgive when somebody has done something against us, it is difficult. But here it comes the third teaching, in my opinion. And yet, pardon is the instrument placed into our fragile hands to attain serenity of heart. As a priest, let me tell you that I have encountered many people who are not in peace. They say, Father, I cannot, I cannot forgive that person because that person did that, that, that to me. I cannot. And when that person says, I cannot, what you can say is that that person is not happy. It's not, uh, it's not in peace. The Pope continues to let go of anger, wrath, violence, are necessary conditions to live in joyfully. Do you want to be happy? I think, I think you, we all want. Forgive. Let go anger, wrath, violence. Forgive. Now we are going to be happy. If we don't do that, we are not going to be happy. And I have seen that in my years as a priest. Uh, not too many years, huh? but some years. I have seen that in my personal experience. The more we get that anger to us and we don't release that from us and we are like, I don't forgive that person because he or she did that to me, hurts me, the more unhappy people are. So let us pray today that as we celebrate this mass, we may be able to forgive and be instruments of, instruments of forgiveness wherever we go. Remember, I'm going to like summarize what I said. First, we have been the object of mercy, so now we have to become subjects of that mercy. mercy. Second, forgiveness is an obligation for every Christian. And third, forgiveness gives us happiness and frees us from whatever we have in our heart. So it makes us very happy and free to fly, to fly in this life. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father.